Well, this is embarrassing. I don't even know where we left off with this thing because it's been sitting here for some time now. We're waiting in the future. Uh, the lady told me no hurry because all this truck does is sit. It never gets driven, obviously. Uh, I did order some parts from Toyota. And then they sent me the wrong parts at first, but I think we have the right parts currently. So these are the three wires here for the cam sensor connector, or the DVT sensor, as they call it. And I believe at some point in the past, yes I did, I, I removed the broken wires because I needed to see if we had to buy the housing or if we needed to buy just uh, the terminals. So here is the uh, part number there on the terminals in case you need one of those. Uh, Toyota keeps this stuff right in service data, so you actually have to have a subscription to Toyota TIS if you want to look up which terminals it takes and what the connector part number is and all that stuff, or just call your dealer and they, they will give you that answer. So let's put this together. We'll get these soldered onto these wires. And I did take a picture of the old one, so hopefully we know where they go. And then we got to fix that one injector wire, which should be this other wire I got from Toyota. This one here. Actually, I got two of them, maybe in case I screwed it up. Now I got some gaskets, we'll throw the intake back on it and we'll take this thing for a two. Oh, and I got a new air filter too. Well, this has been tore apart for some time. So hopefully I remember how to do it. You have this little white latch in here. So we, I don't remember if it comes out all the way. I don't think so, but we're gonna take it out all the way. Perhaps it does. And then these should only fit one direction, I'm assuming. Could be wrong, but we could be right. So let's see, we have plenty enough pigtail. I'm gonna try it this way first. Doesn't feel right, then we're gonna pull a 180 on it. Still doesn't feel right. I'm gonna have to go get my readers, I can't see crap. It's getting old, things starting to suck. Let's see, I'll try it this way. Negative Ghost Rider. And then we're gonna go this way. Ooh, that way feels correct. And I think she hit bottom. Yeah, because now it's latched. And of course, I did not pay attention, so we'll have to do that to all of the wires. Yeah, they don't sell pre-assembled uh, piggy tails. There we go, that one's clicked in. And uh, buying the wires from Toyota is quite expensive. Uh, some of these wires, these ones weren't, I did some the other day on a new Tundra, on a 19 Tundra for the uh, fuel pump control module. It was all rotted off the frame. And um, those wires, those wire pigtails were $25 a piece. So they were quite expensive. I just need to look in there. Of course, you can't see in there, but that's what the uh, assembled connector looks like. So looks good I think these ones uh, you know even for what these were I think these were 10 or 12 dollars a piece somewhere's in there everything feels good I'll make sure it plugs in it be -E a beautiful so there's that I'm thinking I'm thinking we can leave some extra wire so the road had eight these off if you remember correctly right at the, the head of the connector so I think if we leave, you know, four or five inches, it's not going to be a big deal. Get it back in the loom, we're going to taped up. We're going to have to get out the cell phone, see if we can find the picture that we stored. And here's the picture that we stored, so now we can match up the wire and colors. I'll get these soldered together from there so I think with this one here I got to get this uh, connector to release um, I think we might not have to use the wire terminal repair on this one perhaps I'll slide that out of there because we're at chewed I don't know if you guys can see it but it didn't it didn't even break any strands of copper so I'm thinking that if we take a piece of heat shrink the net size bigger than the one I got. Flip it over there to 
this heat shrink it, I think it'll be okay. It's not green or pussy. It looked like it just ate the insulation. You could probably, can even just tape that one. I'm gonna go get a little different size here. That's a little better, mister. It's a little too long. <laughs> Let's see here. Trim that up. Stick that baby on. Probably could shorten it a little bit more, but I think we'll be okay. I'm gonna run it right up tight to that weather pad. Get out the torch. I'm gonna get the heat shrink down here on the bottom just to hold it. The shrink ratio on this stuff's pretty good. Plus it has the adhesive in it. Like I say, that'll save her the money from having to buy that, and I don't think this is a bad repair. I just wanted to see the adhesive spooging out from the ends, and it is. So I think we're good. We'll let that solidify. We'll stick it back in the connector. We'll put the end back in it, and it should be good. And our one up here on the cam sensor should be uh, all dried. Let's have a look at that. So these look all good. These have all been soldered and heat shrinked. And uh, we'll take and put this back in the loom here. Like so. That was originally taped to this harness. I'm going to take and get this taped up. And we'll tape it right down to the connector. And we'll tape it back to this harness like it was OG. We'll get her plugged in. The other one should be just about cool now. That's clicked back in. We'll stick the white lock here back in the middle. They just pop out. So that's clicked back on like that. I'm going to wrap a little tape around it. Uh, I must have cut. No, it's just a piece of tape. I must have cut the factory plastic stuff back open. So I'll get this taped up and get that clicked back on that injector. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, okay. Must have opened up some other stuff here looking for some damage. So I'm going to take and get some of the rest of this tape back up. I don't remember what I was looking for or why this here was opened up. Perhaps it was already chewed up because I've opened up this zip tie here. All right. Oh, I think this was already exposed and I think perhaps we were looking for some wire damage. Yeah, so there is some tiny bits of insulation uh, cut through here. So I'll address that. Uh, make sure that we put a little uh, sealant on it and then get that taped up. So yeah, that's what's going on there. And then we'll get this re-zip tied back down how it was. That one was zip tied, yeah. So these were wire tied through there. This cam sensor is put back. And also, I know because somebody's going to mention it, uh, if you have chronic problems or problems with chronic, you're going to want to get some help. But if you got some chronic problems with mice getting into your car, uh, this is some Honda tape. I don't know if it's there, if you can see the number. This is my go-to, the Super 88, best stuff on the planet. And uh, this is the Honda rodent tape. It is infused with uh, pepper oil, we'll say. Uh, what is it? Capsation, uh, I believe it is. It's hot, the little mice bite it and they get X's across their eyes when they do. So, uh, kind of expensive stuff. Uh, the only stuff I've ever seen it in is, is the Honda brand. I think you can get it on the Amazon or from your local Honda dealer if you want to stop your rodents from eating the soy-based wires. And if you just want a good time, the Super 88. Um, if David Attenborough was doing a documentary on it, he'd be like, over here we have the Scotch Super 88. Some of the best tape on the planet. Some people come here for the auto repair, others come for the lame ass jokes. Pick your poison. So we're gonna take, get it wrapped up. I'll button this up folks, you don't need to see it. The majority of you are wearing repair experts. So this stuff's kind of boring. I get it. But I do the best I can folks. Uh, uh, Should have made a mini roll. Now we got to cut it. The mention of the mini roll, figure I better show you. You take the 10 mil quarter inch drive, if you can find it, 
what you do, stick it on an extension so you can hold it. Take the Super 88, bring it around town, however many times you think you need. And when you hit that many times, go about four more times, or six, and then chop it off. Okay? Ready? Ready to have your mind blown? It's not really that magical, but then you take this and bada bing, bada boom, you got a mini roll. So then you can come do what you got to do. Wrap it around town, all right? Then you can get right in there and do everything you got to do, folks. I've showed you before, but that's how you make a mini roll. Just like that, just put it back together, put the zip tie back on it, sealed up those wires, taped them up with the mini roll, and then, of course, we got our cam sensor back on, taped back there. And now, we're going to take and untape this little guy. It's like peeling a band-aid. Satisfying. So there's that. I'm going to get the intake or the upper plenum here uh, stuck back on there. That was pretty easy. I don't recall if we showed that in the first video, but there's not much to it. And then we've got the fender liner. I see we got a couple pieces for that. And here, got some of these plastic retainer clips. We'll send these back. And there's our new gasket for the intake. So let's see, there's the part number on that. Manifold gasket. Fits perfect. bad now if you guys remember the uh, road here ate the vacuum line off from this manifold tuning valve or flow control valve or whatever Toyota calls it and it's just made out of bulk tubing so this is the OEM stuff runs across the intake here through this little track so we just got some vacuum hose from our supply we're gonna stick that back in the track Run it right along here. If 
probably leave a little slack in case something needs any. Fish that back through here. Chop it up. Plug it in. And that should be it in regards to that. And that's all that we saw. So we saw the cam sensor wiring was chewed up. We saw that fuel injector and of course this little section of harness here. I believe we've got everything plugged in. I don't think we missed any vacuum hoses or nuts or bolts. We still got to put the fender liner back in it. I'll just double check stuff here. All the clamps are tight, all the brackets. Tighten that lower bracket too. The new air filter, all the nuts and bolts over there. And with a little bit of luck, we got the wiring right on our cam sensor and it should even run, hopefully. So put a little fluid film on that. Hook that up. The battery's been unhooked the whole time here. That's all snuggy. I had this one open because uh, I had the charger on it because this thing sits so long. I did let it uh, do a little two amp charge there over the one weekend it was here. It was down quite low. It took a couple days to bring her up to snuff, so that should be good. I don't know if the light will still be on. The light was on, right? I think that's why this thing came in here because the money light was on, but uh, let's Start it up. Contact. Beautiful. It does start and run. I didn't leave it running very long because I want to be able to run a drive cycle. So I just want to start just briefly. The lights are out on the dash. So let's button this thing up. I guess we're safe to put this little guy back on. Put that down. It's the only two bolts we have left and two nuts. I don't know if we commented on the amount of nuts that we moved out of the fender, but I think it was 126, if I remember correctly, that we took out of there, so that was quite a few black walnuts. I don't know if you guys remember from part one, but I had some of these clips that weren't agreeing with me. There's the uh, part number on those. Uh, it was mostly these ones where the fender flare went in. The other ones came out relatively easy, but I grabbed Grabbed us a few of those uh, Toyota. They had them right in stock. So these ones go through the fender liner. Click in there and then they click into the fender and then the fender flare then in turn screws into these. So uh, it's not real rocket surgery here, but they weren't coming out without breaking. So we got some new ones and then we'll put all the screws back in here. And then there's a bunch more clips and some more screws. Pretty easy stuff. My guy Josh put the brakes on it last week, so we're good with that. So we should be good to go on our test drive. We need to take and uh, pick that lug nut up off the floor. I'm going to check all the tire pressures. We're going to get this torqued down. The factory specs go through and torque all the other bolts to factory specs, of course. And then we're going to take it for a shakedown to see if the mouse got somewhere or the rodent got somewhere where we couldn't see, but I'm pretty sure we got all the damage. Looked it over pretty good underneath, didn't see anything else under there. Hopefully this fixes our engine light. And that was it, because you remember it had the code for the cam sensor, I believe it was. It's a really long crank time. to uh, just generic OBD2 here. Monitor's incomplete six, we'll go for a ride. I believe this screen auto updates, so I'll leave it there and we'll see what happens. Eight miles, two to go, not gonna happen. Uh, EVAP and secondary air. Now secondary air won't run this go round. EVAP might, but uh, I'm pretty satisfied to see uh, you know no codes found. But we'll see if the EVAP decides to run. I, it's a pretty tight criteria for that to run. I'd be surprised if it did. Who knows? Mmm. Something smells a little funny here. I better pull over and have a look. Just to be on the safe side.
bone. Didn't smell anything once I got out. I don't know what I was smelling, but good thing we pulled over, that's all I gotta say. We'll get this thing back on and carry on now that we know everything's A-OK. -okay. Well, I guess that's that, folks. Didn't get the last uh, two monitors running. I looked and it's the EVAP and secondary air, so not a big deal. Uh, the good news is uh, no codes. We just have our two permanent codes for the cam sensor stored in there, but no pending codes. And I would assume if we had a circuit issue with EVAP um, or secondary air, we would have, you know, had a code, but I think we're gonna be A-OK. -okay. Uh, I'm going to show you something here, so I'm going to shut the truck off, and then we're going to take and just turn the key back on. We'll go back into the vehicle status here, and it should have erased all the codes, and, and it did. So it puts our monitors back to six incomplete. So, like I say, if you are using check mode, and you plan on running it through for inspection, be aware of that, that as soon as you shut the key off, all those monitors that you just ran are, are null and void. So uh, that's that. I just wanted to show you that. At any rate, use it at your own risk. Uh, it's a great, fantastic tool for verifying on Toyotas if you want to be confident when you give it back to your customer to say, hey, you know, your light's not going to come on. Drive it, hit the drive cycle, get your inspection sticker, move on with your life. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to move on in my life. Got the ice cream burps right now. And I want you guys to move on to that comment section. The questions, the comments, the Insta, the Facebook. Y'all know what to do. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.